Mm. All right. Just dealing with a little technical stuff, getting all set up here. Um, this is using locality research to solve complex problems. My name is Mindy Taylor, and I am accredited genealogist professional specializing in the England region. I work for Price Genealogy doing England and US research. And I also um, work with ICAP Gen study groups and presentation committee. I want you to consider a scenario where you have some information, whether this is from a client or um, your grandma or from a family group sheet. You have a name, you have a location, and you have a year at least um, of a birth date. And all you need is some documentation for this person so that maybe you could find the names of their parents and get back farther and, you know, in your genealogy. Um, so you think this is gonna be pretty easy. You've got the name, you've got a location, you've got a date. And so you sit down to Ancestry or Family Search and you start doing some searches. And you come up with nothing. You can't find anything. Um, and so you start using all those name tricks, using phonetic spelling or some crazy spelling to pick up the way that um, a name might have been misindexed. Um, you even use those little asterisk tricks and stuff like that and you still find nothing, nothing at all, and you're getting kind of discouraged. Well, this might be the perfect time to do locality research. Locality research, we kind of make a shift from researching a person to researching the place. So locality research is gathering information on a location and the available records for a specific time period. All right, what I like to do when I'm starting locality research is to kind of double check the source of the location and time period information. Was this information just passed down through time, through generations? Is it um, like a tradition, word of mouth? Did somebody calculate this date? Could it be off by 10 years or 20 years? Um, have I studied the other family members? Do I know? that this per how this person fits into the family's timeline. Um, and if not, if this information came from a document, then I try and keep an open mind about what the document has told me about the location. Um, sometimes on a, a census record or a passenger list, there is a location, maybe at the top of a family or at the top of a page, and then there's ditto marks all the way down the page. Is that um, giving us the location information or is that just lazy recording? So we need to be really careful with ditto. Um, we also wanna consider who the informant might have been, who was giving this information on the document. We may never know, but we could maybe um, think about who it could have been. And would they have known this information or would they be mistaken possibly because they weren't um, there when it happened? Um, also consider what question was asked the informant. Were they asked where, where were you born or were they asked where are you from? Those two questions can have a very different answer. So if, if somebody was asked where are you from, they may have given the largest, new, nearest um, large city or a region, and maybe not a very specific town or place. So we want to make sure that we're checking any nearby places to the location that is written on our document. All right, then we're going to start gathering information on this location. We want to consider jurisdictions, boundary changes, history, and geography about the time period that we're looking. So we want to consider all the things that could have occurred during the time our ancestor was there. Starting with jurisdictions, a jurisdiction is the territory over which authority is exercised. So in genealogy, we usually see two, um, two types, I guess, of jurisdictions. You've got civil jurisdictions and religious jurisdictions. A civil jurisdiction might be as big as a country, 
a state, a county, it could be a town, a court, a district. And religious jurisdictions can be parishes, dioceses, um, circuits, or a court, because in some places, sometimes religions did have their own courts. All right, so then we're asking ourselves the question, in what jurisdiction would the record be found at this time period? All right, for example, if I'm looking for a census record, am I looking for a US census or am I looking for a state census? If I'm looking for a birth record, am I looking for a church, like a baptism? Or am I looking for a civil or a like birth certificate, something that was kept by the government? Um, your person may have been born in the location that you were given, but the record for that person is in a parish and that parish goes by a different name than that town. So we may have to consider um, the jurisdiction uh, where that record might be located. All right, now we're moving on to boundary changes. Um, some things we might wanna consider with boundary changes is when was the area settled? When did it officially become a city, a county, or a state? Is this during the time period my ancestor was there? When did changes take place in jurisdictions? Are there any maps that show this change of borders? You might be looking in the right place, but that location could have been in a different county or even a different state. So, you know, checking the, the boundary changes at different time periods can be really, really enlightening. Um, history, next, uh, what we kind of want to consider next is the history of the location. Who originally settled the area? Were the settlers associated with a religion or an ethnicity? What industries brought people to the area? Is this a coal mining area? Is this a lumberjack town? Um, or are we dealing with fishermen or something different? When did the area become a city, a county, or a state? Has the name of the location changed over time? And during the time period that my ancestor was there, what was it called? Was the area part of a big historical event like wars or disasters? Um, also, what laws affected the creation of different records in this time period? You may be looking for the right, per you may be looking um, in the right location, but the record set for that time period might be lost, destroyed, or it was never created because there was too much going on to keep records. All right, moving on to geography. The most important thing that I think you can consider for um, geography is migration trails. If, if we can get information about migration trails and how the area that we're looking at was settled, it can be very, very helpful in tracing ancestry back through time. So um, being able to figure out where our ancestors were from. Um, other things, other considerations with geography are physical features like mountain ranges lakes, rivers, forests, deserts, or oceans, um, and also the distribution of populations and resources, land use, and industries. Um, if, for example, your ancestor was a sailor, he may have had children born at ports all around the country, so you may want to get familiar with shipping routes um, and you know, what, what path did certain um, boats take um, what, what ports were there? And all that can be, you know, very, very helpful when you're trying to solve a tough problem. All right, the second half of the definition of locality research um, we, is finding the available records for your time period. So we're going to move on and talk about that a little bit here. Um, all of our research starts with a question. That's what we want to do is um, answer a question. And we'll call that our um, objective. And our objective is, um, is we need it to be clearly defined. We need to clearly, clearly define what we're looking for. We need a target to hit. We can't just throw a net out there and see what we catch. We need to have some, um, some target of what we're looking for. 
And then we're going to ask ourselves what type of record might hold that information. All right, one really great resource out there to help you think about different records is the Family Search Record Finder. In order to, to um, find one, you go to Search, Research Wiki, and then you type in the name of your location, either a country or a state, and then do Research um, Record Finder. Okay, um, and that will pull up a chart that looks like this. You can also Google it. I have found them pretty easily just Googling a location in Record Finder or a family search Record Finder. Um, and this chart, you can scroll down. It goes down quite a ways more than this slide shows you. But it comes in three columns. And the first column is, is the target. What am I trying to find? So if I'm looking for a birth date, it tells me in the first column, first look in, vital records, church records, Bible records, and then search cemeteries, obituaries, and census records. So this gives me, um, it gets me thinking about a bunch of different records that I could check. Each one of these blue words is a link to a Family Search Wiki article that teaches you about that record type. You can also find all the different record types on the right hand side if you follow that yellow arrow. Um, so you could learn more about adoption or church records or military records for this area. And all of that information will help you um, target in on the information that you're trying to find and what is the best place to find it. Another really great resource is the ICAP Gen Regional Resources pages. If you go to the ICAP Gen website and you go under Becoming Accredited and Testing Regions, there are PDFs for each um, region that you can accredit in. So a bunch of different countries and then um, regions in the US. And at the very top of those PDFs is this um, chart that gives you the important record types for that region. This one's for the Mid-Atlantic states. And the columns are must know very well, good working knowledge, and some familiarity. And these are major clues to the record types that you would use in that area. So for example, in the US, there, um, in some places, land records are um, very valuable records to search. In England, we wouldn't use land records very often, hardly ever. So um, knowing what record types are like your go-to records, and if you don't find it there, then you know, move up to you know, the other records that um, might hold that information and solve the problem for you. It's very valuable information. So check those out. Another um, really valuable skill for any researcher is to learn how to use website card catalogs. Um, the card catalogs on websites help us learn what collections they hold for our location. You can search all day on a website and never find anything if they don't hold a collection for your location. So finding out whether or not they do hold records is really, really time saving, even though it's an extra step sometimes. Um, also, it helps you learn what time periods are covered by the collection. So say Ancestry does have a collection for my location, I need to know what years it covers as well. Um, it also gives us the ability to search collections directly. And this is helpful because each collection is indexed individually. And it might have slightly different parameters than a universal search box would have. So searching it directly kind of helps us get some of the details better in place. Another thing is um, being able to access digital images of the originals. Every researcher knows that we are looking for the originals because the originals usually give us more clues, more information than the indexed version. So it may give us names of witnesses or a residence and all of those clues add up to being able to solve difficult problems. So being able to get to the originals and even just seeing them in context of the other records around them can be really, really valuable. All right, we're gonna go over all of the four big websites, Find My Past, My Heritage, Ancestry, and FamilySearch. 
and we are going to just kind of, I'm just going to show you um, how to find their cat car catalogs and kind of how to use them. It's going to be really um, quick, so feel free to go and explore on your own and see what else you can figure out. We're going to start with Find My Past, and Find My Past card catalog is under Search All Record Sets. And I've put a list of countries that their records cover, just in case you're not familiar with Find My Past. All right, when I click on all record sets, it takes me to a place where there's a search box. I can type in a location or a type of record. I can also filter by location or a time period. In this case, I typed in Lancashire, which is a county in England. And at the very top, I'm going to click on Lancashire Bands and Marriages, so that collection. It gives me right away a whole um, search box just for that collection. At the very top, it also tells me more information about this collection, which is what I'm looking for. I wanna know what is included in this collection. So as I read along down there at the bottom, it says view a full list of places included in our parish list. And I'm going to click on that link, the parish list link. Um, this parish list covers baptisms, bans and marriages, and burials. So I'm just going to click on the link that takes me straight down to the bans and marriages so I don't have to scroll all the way down through all the baptisms. And this is what it looks like. It has the parishes that are covered, and it also has the years that are covered. Very, very helpful information. So for example, if I'm looking for somebody who was married in Ardwick, St. Matthew in 1830. I now know that my person is not going to be in this collection because those records start in 1869 and go to 1925. So I don't have to waste my time anymore. I can go and see if I can find these records somewhere else. The other great thing about Find My Past, you can find their digital images in by doing just a standard search and off to the side of um, your results, you will have a box for the transcript and one that you can click on for a digital image if they have one. Um, they also have these collections that you can browse through the whole parish registers. Very cool and very, very helpful. All right, My Heritage. My Heritage's card catalog is under Research and Collection Catalog. And they have the same kinds of things. You can filter by the type of collection, so census or military or newspaper. I can also type in a location or keyword. I've typed in England birth. I could then um, sort it by the number of records or the last updated records or the collection name. I can also um, refine it over on the left-hand side by the years it covers, or I could show collections that will only collections with digital images. So lots of, lots of different choices here, depending on my research style. Um, if I hover over any of the collections, it will give me a description so that I don't have to click into the collection to read more about it, which is really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and click into England and Wales birth, 1911 to 1954, and that same description's at the top of the page. And then I get the search boxes for that individual collection. All right, Ancestry. Uh, let's see, okay, so you start with search and you go to card catalog on Ancestry. Then you can, just like the other websites, I can type in a title, keywords, I can filter by a category, census records or directories or whatever. I can also um, sort by the date that's added, just like my heritage. So if I'm working on a project and it's been 10 years and I just want to see what records are new for this location, um, all of the new, um, at newly added record sets will come to the top and I'll be able to check those out. I'm just going to scroll down this same page and down there at the bottom, we're going to check out deaths, German occupied territories, 1939 to 1945. I'm going to click on that one. And this brings up the search box so that I can type in my information and just search for my ancestor there. But the other really cool thing 
is it gives me this tip. So this is another reason to go and directly search the, the collection. It says, for best results, you should search using German words and locations and spellings, location spellings, sorry. Um, and that, if I was doing just a general search and I anglicized the names of my ancestors, I wouldn't find them. But if I come to this collection and I know, oh, I've got to, I've got to figure out what the spelling was in German for my family, very, very good information. And I would probably find them. Um, it also has on Ancestry, if the collection is browsable, there on the right hand side, it has a browse this collection box and you can just browse right there. If I scroll down um, to the bottom of this record, it'll tell me more information about what is included in the collection. So these are death certificates for German citizens who died outside of Germany. Um, it covers the Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Ukraine, Russia, and the Baltics. So if my person died somewhere else, then I wouldn't need to use this collection. I would find a different one. Um, so very helpful to know this as I'm searching. All right, going back to um, the collections page, um, I'm just gonna click on Boston, Massachusetts, US tax records. It's just right there above deaths in German occupied territories. And this one doesn't have a search box. And the reason this one doesn't have a search box is because it is a browse collection only. So if I was just doing a general search, nothing in this collection would have been searched. It's not indexed yet. But I can, if I search for this location, I can find this collection and then I can browse it and I can look at all of the um, digital images for this collection. All right, one more example on Ancestry. I'm just gonna type in Georgia birth and I'm going to click on um, Georgia select births and christenings. I actually did this for one of the examples that's coming up, so you'll be familiar in a minute. All right, um, and it takes me to the search box for Georgia select births and christenings. And it's not browsable. I don't see a browsable box off to the side there. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and I see there's not a lot of information about this collection here on Ancestry because it is shared with Family Search. And so if I click on that Family Search link, it will take me to the Family Search Historical Records article in the Family Search Wiki. Um, and I can learn all about Georgia births and christenings right here. It tells me what's in the collection. If I scroll down, it gives me the collection content and a coverage table, which is exactly what I wanted to find. If I click on the blue coverage table link, it takes me to this chart. And as I scroll down this chart, this is exactly what it looks like all the way down the chart. There are very, very few births and christening records included in this collection. And the births and christening start in 1845 and go to 1930. But the collection said it was first and christening starting in 1754. So something is not what I was expecting it to be. Obviously, this collection is basing all of its birth record information off of marriages. And that is very, very good to know. Um, I also took the coverage table and I put it right next to a list of all of the counties in Georgia because I wanted to see what counties are covered and right away I could see that Atkins and Bacon and some other counties in that list are not even included in this collection. So if my people are from Bacon County then this collection holds not even no birth records but also no marriage and most likely none of the death records either because there's no collect there's no um, records at all for Bacon County. All right, now we're going to look at Family Search's catalog. Family Search catalog is a little bit different. It's under search and catalog, but the thing that makes this different is that this catalog is for all of the Family History Library's holdings, and a lot of them are on Family Search, so it's kind of for both, if that makes any sense. Um, you can search by surname, titles, author, subject, keywords, 
if you are doing um, or looking at somebody else's research and you have a source citation that has a family history library microfilm number, you can put that in the film and fish number. You can search by the film or fish number and it will bring up the collection. All right, I'm just gonna search by place. So I put in England, Suffolk and Ipswich. And it brings up all of the holdings of the Family History Library. It has a bunch of different categories like cemeteries, church records. I wanna point out history down there. There's 21 records in history. Those may be county histories, they may be state histories, they may be, you know, whatever. It, it's a good place to check if you want to learn more about the history in the area. I'm going to just go ahead and click on the church records, and there are 55 church records. So we're just going to start with the top one, um, and that's baptisms and burials for St. Nicholas Street Church. And the top of the page just gives you the information about the collection. Then you scroll down to the bottom, it will show you the years that um, are covered in the baptism burials, just like, you know, some collection names won't have the years, but down here they always have the years that is covered. Um, it also has like the film number, it has the digital number. There on the very far right, there's a camera. That camera means there are digital images of this collection. The key above the camera means that this collection is locked um, unless I'm in a family history center or in the family history library, and then I can look at the collection. If there's no key above it, if it's just a camera, then I can look at it at home in my pajamas anytime I want. Um, underneath format is a magnifying glass, and that magnifying glass is telling me that this is an indexed collection, it is searchable. So if I click on that magnifying glass, it takes me to the individual search boxes for this collection. And I can then narrow it by birth or marriage or death or whatever I would like to. Just for future reference, this is um, a catalog entry for Almondsbury, Gloucestershire, England. And there at the bottom, you can see two of these catalog entries that have a microfilm reel. That means that this collection, those two collections, are still only available on microfilm at the Family History Library. The, it also gives an example of the camera without a key there at the top, just so that you can see that. You might also see um, collections that are just for a book. So you'd have a call number. Um, it might have a link to a digital book. Um, it may have a CD-ROM entry. So lots of different things that you could see in the catalog because it, it applies to the whole family history library. But at least you would know if there is a record out there for that location. All right, now I'm going to show you the indexed collections of Family Search. So this is under Family Search Records which is what we're all familiar with. We go to family search, records, it gives us the general search box. But if I don't want to search all collections that have been indexed, and I just want to find a single collection to search, then I go down to find a collection, and I can either type in a location or title there, or I can click on browse all published collections, which we're going to do. And then I can narrow down my search right here. So I can narrow it by place or date or type of record if I scroll down, um, or I can type in a location or a keyword and, and see what is held in the collection. Um, I'm going to click on Alabama deaths, 1908 to 1974. It brings me to the individual search box for this indexed collection, and I can search for my ancestor directly in this collection. I also can get more information by clicking on how to use this collection. It's right there at the top, but it's in blue and it's really little, so sometimes you might miss it. But click on that and it will take me to the Family Search Historical Records collection, the Family Search Wiki article about that collection. And it tells me again what's in the collection. Hopefully, we'll find some kind of a table that will tell us the years that are covered in the, the counties, etc. All right, if I want to search just by location, you can do that on Family Search Records as well. 
you can click on the US and it will narrow, or any country, and it will narrow it by state. I clicked on Utah. And it gives me a page of all of the indexed historical records. So I could search everything that pertains to Utah right here. Or I can scroll down and I have little boxes next to all of those 120 collections that I can decide I want this collection and this collection and then search just those. If I keep scrolling down, I can also see all of the collections that are only digital and that I can only access um, through the images. And it has links to those. And it also has catalog material, things like books or CD-ROMs or things like that. So lots of information gathered together for a, a pretty, a little bit smaller than a country, but for, for a location so that you can kind of see what applies to that area. If you are interested in indexing projects or things that might be searchable in the future, they also have those on each of these pages. This is the page for England. So it has several different ones they're working on for that area. All right. If, if you are working in a place where they are um, filming your um, records like crazy, um, there is Family Search Images. They have 300 plus digital cameras worldwide um, that are filming each, you know, each day they're, they're um, getting more and more records filmed, which is awesome. And they're made instantly available here on Family Search Images. So you go to, found, uh, to um, FamilySearch.org and you go to Search and Images. And you will be given a way to search by place or date, um, record type, etc. If you want to view the most recently added images, you can click on that and it will give you a whole list. Um, I have found just from my own experience that if I go to the Family Search um, catalog and I search for my location there, these records are already cataloged within not very long. So um, you will find them there in the catalog as well. But, you know, this is a different avenue that you can look at if you're interested. All right, if I still cannot find what I'm looking for, remember that there are also archives, libraries and universities, historical societies and museums that all hold records. And we can check and see what other places might have besides the internet. Not everything's on the internet. Um, we could also um, admit that that type of record may not exist. If I'm looking for a birth record and, and it just was never created at that time period, then I'm going to have to use a different record type. Or I could use indirect evidence using documents from siblings or parents and putting that information together to figure out uh, an estimated year of birth or something. All right. We're gonna go through two examples and I'm going to cover a bunch of different resources. We're going to do an example from England to represent foreign countries. Easy for me because I'm more familiar with England and then US. Um, and this, the examples are very similar, but we're gonna go over all the different resources that you can use when doing locality research. All right, so the first example is for Briarcliff, Lancashire. Our objective was to find a baptism record for William Park, born 5th of February, 1800, in Briarcliff, Lancashire, England. So we have a location, that's Briarcliff. We have a time period, about 1800, and our jurisdiction would be most likely a religious. So we're looking for maybe a parish. So because I have a place, a name, and a date, I go to Family Search Catalog. And I plug in my place, England, Lancashire, Briarcliff, and it takes me to all of the collect all of the collections that the Family History Library or Family Search holds for Briarcliff. Um, I click on church records because that's what I'm looking for is a baptism record, and I immediately find that if I'm looking in 1800, the parish of Briarcliff does not have the records that I'm looking for. Um, so something's going on and I need to do a little bit of locality research. So I'm gonna do some on Briarcliff. 
And we can take the easy way out, right? So, um, we can Google it. We can check Google Maps. It just gives us modern locations and counting boundaries. So it's not going to be specific to our time period, but it may give us kind of the lay of the land, give, have, help us get a feel for what's kind of around Briarcliff. Um, we can also check out Wikipedia. It has statistics and some history. That's really good information. And on the Briarcliff page, this is, it was very helpful. It says Briarcliff with Ed Witzel was once a township in the ancient parish of Wally. So now I could check out Wally Parish and see if it has the earlier records. That's fabulous. Um, if I want to put those two together, the Google Maps and the Wikipedia, there is FamilySearch.org Research Places. And it is a combination basically of Google Maps and the information. I kind of put this slide halfway in between so you can kind of see the map, kind of see the information. Um, it gives you um, other names for the place. It gives you historical, it gives you research links. So it's a good place, it's a good place to check out. Um, if you cannot find your location by Googling it or looking on um, Family Search Places or in the Family Search Wiki, try Gazetteers because um, sometimes the place name may not be in use anymore and Gazetteers do um, a lot of historical um, names and that's very, very good place to check just in case. All right, another great resource is the Family Search Research Wiki. Um, I kind of showed you where it is before, but we'll do it again just to make sure. You go to the um, search and research wiki, and then I just type in my location. I type in Briarcliff Lancashire, and it gives me a page that looks a lot like Wikipedia. It gives me the same kind of information for the chapel history, which says that you know it used to be within the boundaries of Wally Parish. But the cool thing is as I scroll down, it gives me this cool list of online records. So all of the websites that hold records for Briarcliff are listed here. And it gives me a chart of um, what years are covered by different websites. So if I'm looking for a baptism in 1800, it shows me right here that Briarcliff doesn't have those records, but Wally does. And you can find them on Family Search or Lancashire Online Parish Clerks. So right away, I can find my records much, much quicker right here. If I scroll down, it also gives me maps and gazetteers and some websites to check out. So we're going to start with this really, really great England jurisdictions map of 1851. Um, it's got a clickable map again. So I find Lancashire County and I click on it and it asks me what I want to do, and I tell it that I want it to list all the parishes in Lancashire, which it does over on the left-hand side there, and I just choose Briarcliff, and it brings up where Briarcliff is on the map within the county of Lancashire, and underneath um, that arrow, because this map is laid over the Google Maps, I can see where Briarcliff is, and Briarcliff is also a town, not just the parish. So if I didn't know to go check in Wally Parish for the earlier records, I could look at this map and I could say, well, my person lived very, very close to not just Briarcliff, but also Little Marston and Burnley. So this map helps me see other places that I could check and see if my person's record is there. The other cool thing about this map is it shows that, um, the, that Briarcliff Parish is right on the border of Yorkshire, which is a totally different county. So if I'm always searching in Lancashire, my person may be in Yorkshire. He's not that far away from it. So having that information gives me one more place that I can search and check for records. Um, I, as I scroll down that page, it goes to the websites, and I'm going to show you Briarcliff on the Januki website. Januki is very much like Family Search Wiki. It covers Ireland, Scotland, and um, England, and it has a map. It tells me archives and libraries for the area. If I keep scrolling down, it shows me what churches were in the area. So a lot of England records that are um, indexed 
are Anglican records. But if there are four different churches in this area, Baptist, Methodist, and Quakers, I can click on any of these and find out what time these churches were operating and see if I can't find records for these other churches, if I can't find my person in Anglican records. Another one of my really favorite tools on Januki is down under Gazetteers, and it is the distance calculator. So if I find a record in Yorkshire for a person that seems to be my person, I can see how far away from Briarcliff it is. And that just helps me um, see if that, that amount of miles, like, you know, if it's only five miles away, that's pretty close. But if it's, you know, 50 miles, maybe that's a little too, too far for my person. So very, very helpful tool. All right, now we're gonna move on to the example in the US. Um, this is in Chituga, Georgia. Our objective is to find a birth record for Marianne Etheridge, who was born in 1833 in Chituga, Georgia. She was married 31 of March, 1850 in Menlo, Chituga, Georgia. And we know that because we have her marriage record. Um, so we have a location, which is Chituga, Georgia. Um, and the time period is about 1833. And we don't know if we're going to find a civil or religious record because we haven't done enough research in Georgia. So we're going to just say, well, it could be one or the other, right? I'm going to go to the family search catalog and search for Chattooga, Georgia. And again, immediately I find that under the church records, there isn't anything that dates in 1833. And the census records, you know, they only have 1840, so something's going on and I need to find out more. So I'm gonna do a little locality research on Chattooga, Georgia. So I go to the Family Search Wiki and I go to the Chattooga County, Georgia genealogy page. There's all this information here for me. I'm gonna scroll down and there is this cool chart that tells me when birth, marriage, and death records started being um, recorded by the county or the state government agencies. It also tells me that, it tells me boundary changes um, and record loss, so there's no record loss, but boundary changes. In 1838, Chattooga County was, um, was created from Floyd and Walker counties. So that gives me two other counties to check out because before it was Chattooga, it was Floyd and Walker. The thing that I really, really need now is a map, and it gives me a recommendation to go see mapofus.org website that has a um, county boundary map for Georgia. And this is the Map of US um, Georgia page. This is really cool. It has um, an animated map, so I can push play and I can see all the counties form of Georgia as it happens date, you know, from one change, one date change to the next. I took some screenshots um, just so that I can see the area that Chattooga County was in. And in 1831, so if my person was born in about 1833, um, let's go to the, so in 1838, I want you to see where Chattooga is. You can see it's right there between Walker and, um, and Floyd up in the top corner there. So going back, if my person was born even a year or two sooner than I think, like in 1831, it was all part of Cherokee lands. So that's something I didn't know. Now I'm gonna learn a little bit more. Um, in 1832, just a year later, they formed Floyd and Murray County. So now I don't just have Floyd and Walker County that I could check out, but I also have Murray County and that might be where my ancestors records are. In 1833 then we have Walker and Floyd counties in the area up there by Chattooga. And then in 1838, you can see where Chattooga has been formed out of those. So very, very helpful to see all the changes over time that happened in Georgia and the Georgia counties. If I wanna see pretty much the same thing, I can go to the Atlas of Historical County Boundaries 
which is on publicationsnewberry.org. And they just have a, a selection box down there with the historical borders. And I can select a date um, where the borders changed and I can see those changes happening on the map, just like the maps of the US. So another tool, just depending on what you're used to using and um, what is most helpful to you as a researcher. If you want some more detail, you could go to randymajors.com research hub. He has a really great tool, um, the historical US counties on Google Maps. So the cool thing about this map is that up there at the top where the little magnifying glass is, I can type in a location like a city or a town, but I can also type in an address or you know something like that. I can get pretty detailed, a street name, and it will help me find that and pinpoint it even in more detail. So I just put in Menlo, Georgia, because I know this is where she was married. And I put in the date of 1833, and it pins that location as of 1833, right there by the yellow arrow, that blue pin. And I can immediately see that it's in Murray County. So if she was born in Menlo, like she was married, then maybe she was in Murray County. You can also ask it to show present day county lines and it will put those over the top of the historical ones at that time period. So I can see sort of, you can sort of see Chattooga, it's kind of faint, but um, you can see it's smack dab in the middle of Chattooga, but it's right there on the edge of Murray County. He also has a list of all the changes and the dates when things happened. Um, and so you can check out those. Um, one other tool I want to make you aware of on his website is the section township and range on Google Maps. You can see where my pin still is there in Menlo. Um, that um, part of Georgia was, did not use um, the town section range, but the county right next to it, or I mean, it might be a different, I think it's a different state, does use the um, section township and range. So if I wanted, like say I have a land deed or I have some land description in a will and it gives me the section township and range, I can plug them in here and it will tell me where on the map this piece of property is. I can also search by um, an address and I can put that in there and it will tell me in which section township and range. Um, that is loca located. So really, really helpful tool for genealogists, something that um, hopefully you'll get a chance to use. If you need a historical map, if you need something, say you have a street name that is no longer in use and you need to find out exactly where that street is, you can go to davidrumsey.com historical maps and he's got a huge collection of historical maps of different locations and you can find the one that applies to you and and hopefully solve a lot of your problems that way. I know that you can also use um, these historical maps in conjunction with Google Earth. So um, check into that. All right, I want to just go back now to the Family Search Wiki for the Georgia page. Instead of going to the county, we're going to go to the state of Georgia. Um, it has so much valuable information, um, every location, every um, page that they have um, can give you so much, so much great information. So they've got like research guidance, they've got um, Georgia research tools, they've got online records in that blue button. If I scroll down, it shows me the clickable map of Georgia so I can click on any of those counties and get to their wiki page. Um, the thing I really want to show you, though, is that as I, if I scroll down to the bottom of the page, it shows me migration routes. And look at how many there are for Georgia. Um, I can choose any one of these. I just chose the Fall Line Road one, just as an, as, as an example. But it gives me the historical background. Um, I can see a map where these, um, these migration routes went what you know what where they covered um so 
a lot of history, a lot of really great information right there in those migration routes. All right. Um, Family Search Wiki is not the only source that you have for um, information like this. There are a lot of other websites out there and depending just on your research style, you may find one that works much better for you or the region that you're working in. So I'm just gonna give you a few US examples. Um, there is Cindy's List, which has a lot of great links and things that you can check out. Um, there's US Gen Web. So this is the Georgia Gen Web page. Um, lots of great information and links. There's Linkpendium, similar to Cindy's List, where it just has lots of links and things. Um, Genealogy Inc. gives you the same kind of information. Family Search Wiki has, you know, maps and um, some, some good information about boundaries and county seats and things like that. Um, one that I really need to tell you about is the NGS State Guides. In the syllabus, I've included a list of all of the states that they have done so far. Not all of them are done, but um, these guides teach you how to do research in this location. So lots of information about different records and where you can find them, and what they cover, um, and just generally how to do research in this area. So really good resource. Um, also, do not forget to just look up a state or a county or a social history about your area and see if there isn't anything about your time period that would help you solve the problems. Um, there's, like I've already pointed out on the Family Search catalog under history, you could um, check out what histories they have for that location. Try Google Books, Family Search Books, the Internet Archive, Hathi Trust, um, Historical and Genealogical Societies quite often will publish their own. Newspapers, newspapers for the time period even um, just to learn a little bit about what's going on in the area. So there's like Ancestor Hunt that does newspapers by state, Elephine that searches the world's historical newspaper archives for you, um, newspapers.com, Genealogy Bank, Chronicling America, and MyHeritage all have great um, newspaper collections. If you feel like you just need a little education on how to do research in um, a certain place or about a certain record type, Try Ancestry Academy, they have researching a state. Find My Past has a history hub that teaches you some histories, things um, applying to genealogy. My Heritage has knowledge base. Legacy Family Tree has tons of webinars that you can learn from. The Family History Library has classes and webinars, and you can find a list of them on their website. They also list um, all of the webinars and online classes from outside of Family Search. So search, search for that, Google that, and you can, you can find all the other classes that are available. I'm not going to read all of these. They're in the syllabus, but we have a lot of US reference books that we can go to and learn more about record types and how to find different types of records. Um, and also British Isles reference books. I put those all in your syllabus. So hopefully something in all of this information will be helpful in solving your more complex problems. Locality research is, um, is definitely a way to figure out what went wrong, why can't I find what I'm looking for. Um, I really um, thank you for joining me today. I, um, I am excited that um, Roots Tech is still up and going strong with Roots Tech Connect. Um, don't forget to go and check out the other great content on the Roots Tech page. Um, if you have any questions, if you um, need help with anything, I don't have all the answers, but I'm sure willing to give it a shot. Um, my email is mindytaylorag at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.